Now we're here at Twin Peaks Resort with Donna Hamilton and we're talking about today the purchase of the low speed vehicle. So uh, Donna, you're sitting in your uh, brand new low speed vehicle. Tell us a little bit about it. So the low speed vehicle, it's a zero emissions uh, electric vehicle and it's the first electric vehicle we bought. And um, we bought it in, from SC Carts in Vernon where they're producing these for anywhere in BC as far as, they may be shipping to other provinces as well, but uh, low speed, zero emissions. Okay, so why, why did you decide to do it? Um, with BC moving towards electric vehicles and they want, I think it's 90% sold by 30, uh, 2030 to be an electric vehicle, we decided that our first electric vehicle would be one for just around town and then later on hopefully a vehicle that would be more equipped for going down the highway. Right. Well, okay, so without getting too technical, uh, about how far can you go on a charge? Um, about a hundred kilometers, uh, approximately. We haven't had the opportunity to try and take it down to Kinbasket or anything yet. We're waiting for a sunny day. Um, but we keep it plugged in when we're not operating, so we haven't actually ran it out of power yet. Okay. And about how long would you say it would take to charge from, from empty, if, from if you empty? did have it from empty? Uh, probably about four hours. Okay. And then that's a guess. I, again, we don't know yet. Great, great. And so this one's uh, open, but you do have a few things that you did put into it. Can you talk we about uh, what you added? Um, for us, because we are out of town, we added a lift kit so that uh, the vehicle was higher up and we could go through the bush if we wanted to. Okay. And we added um, a light bar for working around the property in the evenings. Mm -hmm. uh, Bluetooth, so we can have our phones in here and listen to music and or um, telephone operation while we're driving, right. hands-free. We also put a heater in for our future. We, we considered closing it in for winter in the future. Right. So that heater was important. Um, Especially on spring days like this where it's, <laughs> where it's yes. not spring anymore. Not springing. Yet. <laughs> Not springing yet. Yeah. Okay. Great. And so let's talk a little bit. About, I think some people would look at this uh, and and say, "Hey, that's a golf cart. You can't be driving it uh, in town." So why is this a street legal vehicle? So Motor Vehicles Act um, enlists several things to make it street legal. One is a DOT windshield. So we have a proper windshield in this to protect us. We've got the seat belts. Okay. That make it street legal. It has headlights, signal lights, brake lights, and we also have a low speed uh, sign on the back to allow us to go through town. Okay. I also see uh, two side mirrors and a rear view mirror as well, right? And I mean, those are on a lot of quads too, right. but we must have them to make it street legal. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, being Vail Mount, people have been complaining for years <laughs> that they haven't been able to drive their quads, their ATVs yes. in town. So obviously the main difference is that this is insured, it's licensed Absolutely. and it's, and it's uh, approved by... Uh, Canadian Motor Vehicles Act. Right. Uh, under that. And I mean, this, this gives them the opportunity to drive a quad-like vehicle through town if they want to purchase one. So that is an, uh, an opening for us all to have a low speed, zero emissions vehicle in town and get the feel of riding a quad because there's nothing nicer than in the summer to be driving down the road with it all open and enjoying it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So uh, it goes without saying that when something new comes to Velma, yes. <laughs> people will talk. <laughs> and I guess you had a little bit of controversy at the beginning and a little bit of concerns there. Can you kind of run us through what happened? Sure, um, like anything, as soon as someone saw it, they were, why is this being allowed in town? So somebody took a picture, sent it to the mayor. Why is this being allowed? Mayor didn't actually know yet. And so it was just a process of education and explaining to the mayor why this was not a quad or anything else like that and how we fit into the page as far as being legal. Right. But before you even purchased it, you did, you did your due diligence. Absolutely. What, what did you do to, to, uh, to figure out whether it would, would be allowed in Valmont? Um, we contacted bylaws because that's the biggest concern is each town gets to make their bylaws regarding 
this kind of a vehicle being allowed. There are no bylaws against it here in town, so it falls back to Motor Vehicles Act, which it does allow it. Okay. And then I went to the insurance office and discussed it with them prior to ever getting the vehicle. And I got all the appropriate uh, ICBC paperwork in place. Then I went to the police station and they said they had no problems with it as long as it fit under the Motor Vehicles Act, which it did. Um, so I had done all that prior to us ever being getting delivery of the vehicle. Right, right. And so what are the, uh, what are the, the appropriate uh, applicable codes under the Motor Vehicles Act for a low-speed vehicle? It's actually called that. It's the Motor Vehicles Act, if you look it up online, and it's Low Speed Vehicle or LSV. Okay. And it will list that it must be zero emissions. So we're running on a battery, we're not running gas. Um, and it has a speed limit of under 45 kilometers an hour and then it has the safety restrictions that we went through already. Right, right. Okay, and so you can cross a highway with it? You can cross a highway, and if you have further permission, you can drive down the side just like a tractor, if you had a destination, a short destination like a tractor or anything else. Okay. But we can't go driving down the highway heading towards Kamloops in this by any means. That would be we would be arrested <laughs> or right. vehicle towed. Right. But anything under 45 kilometers, which we're lucky, our, vi our village is all under 45 kilometers an hour. Right. So I can drive anywhere in town and I can cross the highway and... Okay, so ultimately, uh, I mean, right now is a, is a great time for electric. Yes. You know, not just for the environmental purposes, but for the cost of gas, which is uh, uh, unbelievable. So you told me earlier you're, you're using this as a second vehicle, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And so you're going to use your truck, obviously, when you need long-range things or you right. need to haul big things, but, but more in town for this kind of thing. Is this the kind of thing that uh, you think people should seriously consider for in-town use? I think this would be ideal for our village. We can get everywhere we need to be in this, um, other than going out to the dump. Right. To the transfer station. Other than that, we can drive anywhere in town with this that we need to. It's quiet. We don't have the gas fumes constantly running in vehicles outside. And the congestion. This is small. We can park in just about anywhere with this. And we know how busy our downtown gets in the summer with tourists. And now with the Trans Mountain people and... Yeah, absolutely. Great, great. So you would definitely encourage people to do it, and uh, you really haven't had any downsides to the vehicle. You've been driving it since, what, November? Yeah, we got it in November, so we've done a couple trips in the fall and then some this spring, but it's still a little cool. Uh, I actually think, like, the senior centre would benefit from something like this, allowing the seniors to run back and forth or have someone drive them and do a pickup. Instead of a bus, Instead right? of a bus. Right, right. Yeah, just a quick shuttle around town for them get their groceries, go to the doctor. Right. Now, the, the company, and, and I'll show some uh, pictures of, of different vehicles on the websites, they make fully enclosed vehicles as well that are more designed for yes. uh, urban kind of uh, environments, but also, uh, I, I would imagine, better for winter kind of environments. So you, you drove it in the winter. How, yeah. how does it operate in the winter? It, it doesn't go quite as fast. Okay. And we think the battery goes down a little bit quicker, which would be standard for any electric vehicle. Right. A, a Tesla doesn't run as well in the winter as it does in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, we've had no issues with it. Um, we look forward to possibly getting the enclosure, of not the full plexiglass, but one that's removable for next winter. Okay. And if that's the case, we'll be driving it in the winter into town too. Great. <laughs> And uh, I understand you guys are, are planning a trip uh, maybe up to five mile to give it a little test run on a, on a steep hill. Or... <laughs> yeah, Sandy wants to take it out. And I mean, we've got hills back here too, but yeah, we want to try it and see. Again, a shuttle service for people would be ideal. And if you could shuttle up even five mile, we do have a trailer hitch on ours. Right. So we'll see how much it'll pull and... Yeah, there you go. There you how go. steep of a hill it'll go up, well, we're yet to find out. Well, that's great. Well, congratulations Thank to you, you and uh, Sandy for doing this. I think it's uh, it's helping lead the way and, and show what, what is possible in this day and age. And it's great for the environment and it's, uh, it's a great new thing. So thanks for doing it. Thank you so much. And maybe now I'll get you to uh, give us a little test drive. Uh, you can drive it around a little bit and show us how it operates. You bet.
that's it. Very quiet. <laughs> it is that. <laughs> Very there. nice. Thank you so much. We're here with Vale Mount Mayor Owen Torgerson in front of the village's brand new electric vehicle. So, Mayor Torgerson, can you give us a little rundown? Um, why did the village decide to go electric? Well, uh, they are making headway in the electric vehicle industry. Um, this particular unit is classified as a low-speed vehicle, relatively um, newish designation by Transport Canada. Allows uh, here in BC, the uh, legislation kind of points towards a neighborhood-friendly vehicle, uh, and you know, one step at a time. Uh, we, as an organization, can uh, start to uh, reduce emissions uh, along with everyone else. Right, so that would be my next question then. Is this kind of the start of something for the village? Do you have a plan for more electric vehicles? Not at this time, Michael, but you know, anything's possible as costs come down, as efficiencies in battery, uh, longevity uh, increase, uh, anything's possible. Right, and so right now it's, it's uh, what you refer to as a multi-use vehicle, although it's primarily being used by the bylaw enforcement officer. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about how it operates? Uh, what's the top speeds for it and how long does it last on a charge, that kind of thing? Uh, well, I can say that, you know, um, battery life in a single charge is very dependent on ambient temperature of the, uh, around it. But typically about 50 to 100 kilometers, uh, we've seen you know significant drops in battery capacity even in these cool temperatures. The the battery within it has a bit of a warming blanket around it to keep it at 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, so try to be a, a, as efficient as possible. And of course, in these cooler temperatures, the operator, the bylaw enforcement officer, would also want to stay a little bit comfortable. So with the the heated seats and the defrost, uh, certainly does a, a reduction on your battery life. Uh, recharge time uh, on 110, about four hours, and at 220 volts, about half that time at two hours. Okay, and uh, about 50, 60 kilometer range? Uh, anywhere, the specs say anywhere between 50 and 100 kilometers. Okay, depending uh, on and a, and a top speed, top speed of 40 kilometers an hour. Okay, and that's the classification here. This is not like a, a Tesla or an electric vehicle. This is a low speed vehicle. And can you tell us what the limitations are for low speed vehicles? Yeah, the, uh, in order to operate a, a low speed vehicle under the rules of Transport Canada, of course, uh, again, in, here in BC, the uh, neighborhood friendly uh, vehicle uh, needs to be operated in speed zones of 50 kilometers an hour uh, maximum or less. Okay. Right, and we're going to talk, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was uh, uh, Donna and Sandy Hamilton's uh, low-speed vehicle as well, which is a, a nice tie into the story. But there are certain limitations uh, in terms of it, like you can't drive it on the highway at highway speeds, but you can cross a highway, provided the highway is no, no more than 80 kilometers per hour, I understand, from the Motor Vehicle Act. Yeah, so you'll never see this vehicle out at the Valmont Transfer Station. Uh, and with this segment of highway being at 70 kilometers an hour, you're absolutely right. It makes just uh, a suitable vehicle for this particular neighborhood. Um, you know, there's, there was also some talks, uh, as you probably are aware, of the uh, pilot projects going on in Chase and in Qualicum Beach on certain street segments within those municipalities where uh, folks can operate golf carts. A low speed vehicle is not a golf cart. It's a fully registered, fully insured, uh, has its own set of safety features and are able to be operated in any municipality where the speed limit is 50 kilometers an hour or less and in certain, uh, sorry, and under certain uh, weather conditions. So a low speed vehicle such as the Hamiltons uh, may not be able to be operated in a snowstorm for example, or at night. 
um, and it certainly uh, has much more safety features than your typical golf cart. Right, right. And so I understand that uh, this vehicle was purchased from the for the village uh, through a grant program. Can you tell us what the grant program was and, and the uh, cost? Uh, approximate cost was about fifty thousand. Uh, I really have to get those, you know, the dollars and cents amounts from our director of finance. Uh, but through the granting program, through our uh, carbon initiative and reporting uh, requirements. Right, and this is one of those things that uh, it's uh, an investment that pays off because obviously you're not paying the uh, exorbitant prices of gas right now. And so, do you have an idea? I mean, I probably should have asked you this in advance, but do you have an idea what the uh, what the return on investment is? How many years it will take uh, vis-a-vis gasoline to pay this off? Uh, at these current gas prices, probably a couple of days. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I'd have to. Get, I'll report back out to you, Michael, as soon as uh, okay. we can crunch those numbers. Great. So let me ask you. Uh, s- switch the conversation back to the Hamiltons. Um, I understand there was a little bit of, not controversy, maybe concern or or at least curiosity about their vehicle that filtered back to you. Can you tell us the story on that? Yeah, it was a, a very good learning experience for all of us, including uh, our partners at uh, the RCMP, uh, insurance providers. Uh, bylaw services, myself, council. Uh, we had uh, what sprung from that, Michael, was a, a report from staff really highlighting what LSVs or low speed vehicles uh, are really about. And having a conversation with both Sandy and, uh, and Donna really highlighted the, the, the real difference between, say, an off road vehicle, a golf cart, and a low speed vehicle, and, and the, the differences between them all. Right, because it, it's no secret that people have been wanting to drive their quads in town for a long time, and, and I guess they look at this and go, hey, what's, what's this? This is a golf cart. I should be able to, looking at this, ride my uh, off-road vehicle down Fifth Avenue, but again, uh, these are fully insured. These are not off-road vehicles. These are not golf carts. They are fully insured, fully registered, and fully legislated to be driven in these kind of environments. Great. And so uh, just to wrap up, is this uh, this initiative and, and the, the Hamilton's initiative with uh, LSVs, is that something that the village is getting behind? I know it's one of the pillars in your uh, in your long-term strategic planning. Well, any, any initiative where uh, we can make a difference moving into the future. Uh, again, these, these kind of vehicles are absolutely perfect for not, not just Belmont, but any resort municipality, you'll, you'll see uh, a lot of uh, initiatives down in the Kootenays where you have the electric highway, you have uh, fleets of these kind of vehicles uh, being circulated uh, throughout uh, public works and uh, for uh, other staff members that are, uh, are needing to travel within the municipalities. Right. So for people uh, in town, there are no bylaws against this. And, and actually the village is encouraging people to get behind supporting uh, environmental initiatives, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that would prevent somebody from operating a vehicle like this would be the creation of a bylaw and council's not ready, willing to do that anytime soon. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.